Joining us now are Jeremy Peters, New York Times media reporter and an MSNBC contributor, and David Plouffe, former White House senior advisor under President Obama. Thank you guys both for being here with me as we try and unpack what I think has been one of the most dangerous forces in American politics, the, the rise and rise of Fox News. Jeremy, where does this lawsuit stand? Just from that Sean Hannity quote that he's saying boldly, I did not believe those lies. I mean, how does Dominion's case stand as you see it? It's one of the strongest defamation lawsuits that First Amendment scholars will tell you has ever been compiled against a major media organization. It's, it's an extraordinary case uh, because you don't, as you laid out perfectly well, Fox is an extraordinarily powerful entity. It's, it's a cultural force as well as a political force as well as a media force. And it's, it's an identity to the people who watch it. And so to have them uh, uh, potentially on the hook for lying to their audience, which has been fairly well documented but not yet tried mm -hmm. in, in a court of law, is... It, 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 this is so far along, Alex, that we have never seen a case get this far against a major media company in a very, very long time. The, so, yeah, and this is, I mean, the fact that Rupert Mur Murdoch exactly. himself is sitting for a deposition is meaningful, it would seem. It seems like there is a case to be made that he was calling the shots here, that he knew these lies were going to be broadcast and indeed, he wanted them to be. Well, it's so meaningful that typically you would see companies like Fox settling these cases before the chairman is ever deposed. The fact that he sat for two days of depositions tells you how far along this case is and what kind of evidence Dominion has amassed against Fox. To, to give you an idea of, 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 of how serious it is, Sean Hannity has been back for two depositions. It, the first one wasn't enough. Dominion uncovered more evidence of his possible knowing uh, uh, that, that they were spreading falsehoods on the air. Jeanine Pirro also has been back for a second deposition. Uh, Suzanne Scott, the CEO of Fox News, was also called back for a second deposition, but ultimately that didn't happen. So over the course of this case, Dominion has uncovered more and more text messages and emails showing that people at Fox knew what they were putting on the air probably wasn't true, but did so anyway. And that's the kind of evidence that a jury will look at and ultimately decide if they should pay $1.6 billion. David, from a political perspective, I mean, as someone who <laughs> knows well what it is like to be on a presidential campaign and what work goes into being in a White House and how important information is in this landscape, what, what is the meaning of Fox News to someone who works in democratic politics? Well, Alex, I'm not sure there's been anything more dangerous or, uh, you know, devastating to American democracy, the fight against climate change and Fox News over the last 30 years. And in fact, Rupert Murdoch uh, has kind of rained terror and devastation on three continents. So it's an enormously important, it's not just who wins or loses a certain election cycle. Uh, over a course of decades now, uh, Fox and Rupert Murdoch uh, here in the United States and in Australia and the UK ha have really done tremendous damage. I do think there's already been an effect though. So if you look at the 2022 election, which I think by any reasonable measure was a disaster for Republicans, even though they narrowly won the House. You didn't see the same, you know, other than Kerry Lake, and I think Fox was careful about how they covered that, you didn't see the same playbook that you saw in 20. And I think in part, uh, it's because the lawyers are concerned about these cases. Uh, and so, you know, I think there was a brushback pitch. Now, ultimately, if they have to pay big damages here, this could be an important part of securing democracy, because without Fox, and of course Fox is like the Pied pod, pod Piper, the Sinclair stations, other online outlets, they all follow, right? So if Fox is not calling the play that we're gonna challenge the election and say it was stolen, then I think there's less oxygen. Uh, so this could not be more important to I think the really still ripe question of whether we're gonna remain a democracy. Yeah, and to, to follow on that, David, I mean, I think a lot of people will say, oh, it's not just Fox, it's not all laid at Fox's doorstep, which is absolutely accurate. There are a number, there is the internet, there are spin-off conservative media networks that are loosely based in fact, if fact at all. 
all. But the, the, the reality is that, you know, Fox has a seat at the White House briefing room. Fox is still seen by much of the country as a mainstream news outlet. It is on in airports. It is on in sports bars. It is on in hotels. And that is very different than One American News Network and its other related spinoffs. That's very different from even the Alex Jones hour of uh, whatever you want to call it. And I think, you know, when you are in when you are in a White House, when you are trying to get a message across, having getting Fox News to carry your news, your information is critical to reaching a part of the country, isn't it? Is it not? Oh, there's no question, you know, Alex, like you, I've studied this very carefully. So Fox obviously has its original audience. It's obviously got then uh, even a bigger audience when people share that content across their social media networks. But Fox is the coach. OK, so when Fox latches onto a storyline, to a narrative that trickles down. So whether it's OAN or Breitbart or the Sinclair stations or talk radio, uh, they're going to follow. So when when Fox says this is what we're going to do, gang, that's what they do. So it's an entire ecosystem of disinformation that they control. Uh, and we've really seen nothing like it in America, uh, certainly uh, in terms of its import. Uh, and those numbers you showed were really important, which is they haven't you know, declined that much. What I guess you take as a positive in terms of people's reaction to January 6th. Uh, but there's no doubt the Fox effect has, has sort of kept a ceiling on that. Unfortunately, you'd like to see those numbers creeping up to 70, 80 percent in terms of people correct directly talking about what January 6th was. So uh, you're absolutely right. You can't just look at Fox. They are at the top of the pyramid, uh, and they basically, all the sewage flows down from them and it gets picked up by other outlets. Jeremy, you were nodding your head in agreement when David was talking about a more cautious approach on Fox to the 2020 elections and election denialism. Mm -hmm. Can you elaborate on that head nodding? Do you oh, think yeah. that they're trying to, th th this lawsuit is having a, a chilling effect on the otherwise uncensored uh, uh, spouting of lies? Well, let's not forget where this whole episode started, right? Fox actually did the right thing and told its audience the truth on election night in 2020, Very which true. is that Joe Biden won Arizona. That truth, however, was incredibly inconvenient for Fox's profitability. Their ratings fell off a cliff, and in order to sustain those ratings, what Dominion is arguing and what we presume they have uncovered in the discovery process of this lawsuit is that many Fox hosts and executives said, we need to shift the storyline here and talk about fraud because that's what Trump is talking about. So what ended up happening was they've, you know, they're now overcorrecting for that initial, th th those falsehoods that they allowed Rudy Giuliani, they allowed Cindy Powell, all these people to come on the air and say just like completely irrational, phony things. And now if you look at, I mean, just look at what happened on election night in 2022. Fox was the slowest to call many races. Initially, they would have been, when Rod Rails was running that network, Fastest. they were the first because they knew that that was what their audience wanted. Now, they're not so sure. They were very careful. They were the slowest to call the House of Representatives uh, for, for Republicans, or to, uh, rather the Senate for the Democrats. Uh, because that was not exactly what their audience wanted. wanted. Uh, one more to you, David, in terms of, you know, the, the deleterious effect Fox has beyond the misinformation and the disinformation, the active spreading of lies. There is a tendency to champion autocrats. <laughs> Tucker Carlson took his show to Hungary and interviewed Viktor Orban. There are more subtle and non and perfectly legal ways in which they champion forces that are decidedly anti-democratic. And my question to you is, as long as that sort of th that strain of politics politics is successful um, and it keeps on being something that Fox can legally do, what recourse is there for uh, the rest of the country? It's a great question, Alex. So, yeah, I think not the entire network and certainly not 24 hours a day, but certainly some of their evening hours, you, you do feel like some of those personalities would love to be state sponsored media in an autocratic regime. Um, they they not just uh, they admire some of these other leaders in these other systems. So I think what it's going to take uh, is in primaries, the Republican presidential primary being the big one in front of us, but over the next two, two election cycles, let's say, you see more Republicans uh, for Congress, for governor, for secretary of state, for president, being able to win 
uh, without embracing basically this anti-democracy, pro-autocracy, uh, you know, argument. Uh, now, that's hard to do when the biggest megaphone <laughs> continues to shout that from the rooftop, uh, that in fact, there's something to admire about autocracies, that our democracy is deeply flawed, you know, that, that things like replacement theory, it's almost like the white power hour sometimes uh, on that network. That's a big concern, but I've always believed that's what it's gonna take. I will feel certainly better about, you know, our democracy when you begin to see more Republicans who basically are deeply conservative, <laughs> don't agree with Democrats on hardly any issues, but basically are more institutionalist win. That may seem like a fairy tale, but I do think you may see some Republican primary voters this time and certainly in 26 say, hey, the other crowd's not doing too well in general elections. And it doesn't take that many voters to change that. But that's what it's gonna take, because I don't think Fox is gonna change their tune at all. The people will have to lead the network to the truth. New York Times media reporter Jeremy Peters and former White House senior advisor under President Obama, David Plouffe, thank you guys both for your time tonight. Really appreciate it.